Right now we're working on the, the impacts of uh, certification scheme, forest certification scheme, such as the FSC, uh, and what are the difference that these schemes can, um, can bring to the countries where sustainable forest management is already, should be already in place uh, with the legal framework, but it's not actually. So that's why we are trying to see whether these uh, voluntary market-driven instruments are can, can have an impact on, on, uh, on sustainable forest management within the countries. That's the logic behind the whole scheme. I mean, uh, consumer countries should be ready to pay a higher price for timber which is better managed and uh, that belongs to better uh, criteria that is produced with better criteria in terms of uh, livelihoods, in terms of uh, ecological and of course economic uh, criteria. Uh, not yet. I would say uh, it's improving, uh, at least in terms of areas and surfaces. Uh, it, it shows potential to, to really improve uh, uh, things, how, how things are done in the forest, uh, but it's at the beginning, you know, the first uh, FSC certification was given in, at the end of 2005 in Cameroon, so it's still in the initial process, but it shows a lot of potential, yes. It's still, it all goes back to governance. Uh, there are limits, uh, above which certification itself as a, as a market instrument cannot, cannot go. Uh, you need the government to, uh, to, to give it, I mean to support it and, uh, and to help uh, implement those criteria that are in the certification. Uh, for example, in terms of, um, of livelihoods or social impact, you, companies always tend to do the, the least possible and, uh, and, and, and sometimes it is the legal. But certification requires something more than the legal and uh, if the government is not there to, to help raise also the legal standard, you, you find that there is a, a tendency to degrade the, even the, the certification criteria back down to the, to the legal one. Uh, so this is what we are finding now, uh, but certification has this potential to be above the legal, legal limits. There are other instruments that now are being developed for targeting specifically illegal logging, uh, notably the flagged forest law enforcement governance and trade program action, action plan of the European Union. Uh, certification can indeed help. Uh, it can have its part of, uh, of, uh, of, this, of, the, of the process. Um, but I would say legality is something that really belongs to the state. So, as a, as a market-driven voluntary process, I'm not sure certification um, should have this role. I mean, it has this role in, indirectly, but it is the government who which must enforce its own laws and put them in place and be sure that companies respect those laws. So that's the way uh, the European Union, for example, is following with the, with the VPA, Voluntary Partnership Agreements negotiation, to make sure that all timber that leaves the country has followed a chain of custody and uh, traceability, traceability uh, system. They can be. I mean, the law gives them the possibility to do that uh, through community forest. Um, the experience of community forest in Cameroon in the last 15 years has been mixed, uh, I should say. Uh, it's not an overwhelming success. There are still a lot of problems, um, economic, social and environmental. And, uh, but we, we, we are trying to improve the, also that, that part of the, of the forestry sector, yes. Uh, as recently the best, uh, the best impact that we had 
is uh, first of all the uh, we show that uh, domestic market this small scale logging I was talking about is actually very important in terms of volume and in terms of the social dynamics that regulate it so uh, and it's completely outside of the legal framework there's no legal framework for domestic timber market that's where uh, we can do research we can have an impact tell the government that it is important and must be not not completely regulated but uh, uh, at least taken into account in anything that the government negotiates, for example, with the European Union, in the case of the FLECT and VPA negotiation. It must be taken into account because if you want to have an impact on livelihoods, uh, the industrial timber sector is not the biggest actor in, uh, in these terms. You need to go there, you need to, 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 to assess this domestic sector. Well, it's still very, everything is very hypothetical in terms of the practical schemes that will be applied on the ground. Uh, what we are trying to do in that sense is an analysis of already existing redistribution scheme. I mean, money being redistributed from forestry taxes to local people. And that could be one of the uh, instruments that REDD plus or plus plus will, will, will use. So we assess what the impact have been in the last 15 years of this redistributing scheme. Unfortunately, the results are not very, very <laughs> positive, uh, but we believe that at least, uh, the, the first step is documenting what has gone wrong and what, is gone, what, is, what, what was uh, better, so that uh, lessons can be learned for these new schemes that will be, will be implemented probably in the future.